50 years ago, the discovery of a nearly complete fossil skeleton in the arid, rocky landscape of Ethiopia sent shockwaves through the scientific world. This fossil, dating back an astonishing 3.2 million years, belonged to an early human ancestor that would forever change our understanding of human evolution. It was named Lucy, after the Beatles' song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Over the decades, Lucy's significance has only grown, as scientists have pieced together the story of her life, and, perhaps more interestingly, the story of her final moments. The year was 1974, when Donald Johansson, a paleoanthropologist, and his team were conducting an excavation in Hadar, Ethiopia, as part of the International Afar Research Expedition. After two weeks of extensive work, they uncovered a series of bones protruding from the gully bedrock. What they soon realised was extraordinary. They had found the most complete hominin skeleton ever discovered at that time, about 40% of a single individual's bones. The fossil would later be classified as Australopithecus afarensis, a species that straddled the line between ape-like ancestors and the early members of our genus. At first, Johansson was unsure of the significance of the find, but as they recovered more bones, it became increasingly clear that this specimen was unlike anything they had encountered before. The team dubbed the specimen Lucy, after the Beatles' song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which had been playing on the radio during their celebratory evening. Lucy's discovery was a game-changer in the study of human evolution. Prior to her unearthing, scientists were embroiled in a heated debate over whether bipedalism, or walking on two legs, or a larger brain, had evolved first in human ancestors. Lucy, with her small brain size and clearly bipedal anatomy, provided compelling evidence that walking upright came long before the evolution of a large brain. This discovery helped solidify Australopithecus afarensis as a crucial link between early apes and the human lineage. It showed that bipedalism was a defining trait long before the advent of modern Homo sapiens. Lucy was a young adult when she died, likely in her late teens, though her body was about the size of a modern six- or seven-year-old. She stood roughly 3.5 feet tall and weighed around 60 to 65 pounds. Despite her diminutive size, Lucy's species was highly adapted to its environment. The shape of her pelvis and knee joints indicated that, like modern humans, she was fully capable of walking on two legs. This was a critical trait for survival in the open savannas of East Africa. However, evidence from her hands and arm bones suggests that, despite her bipedalism, Lucy retained some ape-like characteristics. She could still climb trees, likely using her strong arms for balance and support, as she foraged for food or sought refuge from predators. Lucy's diet was varied, with evidence suggesting that she consumed a mix of plant material, including grasses and roots, along with insects and perhaps small animals. Her tooth enamel analysis indicates she did not shy away from opportunistic feeding, potentially scavenging meat from animal carcasses when the opportunity arose. While early in human evolution, Lucy's diet showed the flexibility necessary for survival in a harsh, predator-filled landscape. Given the ever-present threat from large carnivores like saber-toothed cats, hyenas, and large crocodiles, Lucy likely lived in a mixed-sex group of 15 to 20 individuals, much like modern chimpanzees. This social structure would have provided a measure of protection from predators, and evidence from fossilised remains of other Australopithecus afarensis individuals supports the idea that they likely took care of each other. For example, a fracture found in the leg of a male Australopithecus, known as Kadanumu, healed over time, suggesting that members of the species may have provided care and assistance to each other in times of need. For decades, the exact cause of Lucy's death remained a mystery. Early hypotheses pointed to a violent attack, with the discovery of a tooth mark on her pelvis, suggesting a potential crocodile strike. Crocodiles, which were known for their ambush hunting tactics, could have easily taken advantage of the small, vulnerable Lucy as she ventured too close to the water. However, new evidence has come to light, casting doubt on this theory and offering a new perspective on the last moments of Lucy's life. Recent advances in imaging technology, including high-resolution CT scans and 3D reconstructions of Lucy's skeleton, 
have provided more detailed insights into the injuries she sustained. When paleoanthropologist John Kappelman and his colleagues analysed the fractures in Lucy's bones, they discovered something interesting. The injuries were not consistent with a violent attack from a predator. Instead, the fractures in her right shoulder, ribs and knees suggested that she had fallen from a significant height, likely from a tree. The pattern of her injuries indicated that she had fallen to the ground feet first and then collapsed onto her hands, which would have caused severe trauma. The nature of her injuries suggests she was conscious when she hit the ground, but she would not have survived for long. While there is still some debate about the precise circumstances of Lucy's death, Kappelman's findings offer a compelling new interpretation of her final moments. Rather than being the victim of a crocodile attack, Lucy's death may have been the result of a fatal fall, a tragic accident while foraging in the trees, a behaviour that would have been natural for her species, given they lived in trees. Lucy's discovery continues to shape our understanding of human evolution. Her species, Australopithecus afarensis, lived in a world where early hominins were beginning to adapt to new environments and behaviours that would eventually lead to the rise of Homo sapiens. Although Lucy lived millions of years ago, her legacy persists in the form of the hundreds of fossils recovered from sites in East Africa, which together provide a window into the lives of our distant ancestors. In the decades following Lucy's discovery, other significant fossils were found, such as the first family of Australopithecus afarensis and the famous Lyotoli footprints in Tanzania, which provide additional insight into the lives of Lucy's species. These discoveries reveal that A. afarensis was not only highly adaptable to different habitats, but also shared its world with other hominin species, such as A. anamensis, coexisting in the same time period. The discovery of these fossils has revolutionised our understanding of early human evolution, illustrating that the evolutionary path to modern humans was far more complex and fragmented than once thought. Lucy's death may have occurred 3.2 million years ago, but her story is far from over. Her fossil remains continue to shed light on the complex and often dangerous world in which early hominins lived. The latest technological advancements have allowed us to piece together new details about how Lucy met her end. Today, Lucy remains a cornerstone of paleoanthropology. Her skeleton is housed in Ethiopia's National Museum in Addis Ababa and continues to inspire researchers and captivate the public. Her story doesn't end with her death or even her discovery. As technology advances, we continue to learn more from Lucy's bones, from the structure of her joints to the isotopes in her teeth, every fragment of her skeleton tells a story about the life she lived and the world she inhabited. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment your thoughts and see you next time.